because it's the first movie we watched in 2020. I said 19. Mm. First movie we watched. It's the movie is Amadeus, and it's the story of a guy. What is the story about? It's a, sto a story that is narrated by Antonio Salieri. Apparently, the story is narrated by this Italian composer who wants to be a famous, successful composer to, for the glory of God, celebrate religion, culture. But he really wants to celebrate himself. That's what he wants to celebrate. So his journey, his personal journey, is a journey of his ego, his self. His very ego-driven journey. He wants, he wants to be celebrated. And so he embarks on a journey and he gets educated. And what ends up happening is that, well, he, what he really gets is he learns technique and he becomes capable of detecting good and bad art. So that's, that becomes his unique feature. And in the movie, we join him, we join his point of view and his appreciation of Mozart. He appreciates Mozart. He really realizes Mozart is a great composer, but he is not common. His view is not common. His view is like a minority. It's almost like a secret. So he shares his secret in the story with the father, with the, with the priest, and with us. Uh, I just told you this. Uh, he the director, writer slash director, they do this reveal, this little bit of reveal of his character. On the surface, he's concerned with art, music, training of musicians, but he has this little character revelation, and that is in his pleasure of food. Mm -hmm. So it's like occasionally there's these scenes where he has some sweet, and his relation with Exactly. His relation with his sweet is, is not normal. <laughs> it's a kind of like a, a, he fetishizes the sweet things. He's, uh, because he, he doesn't have sex. He he's lives a life of chastity. He's, this is part of his deal with God. Mm -hmm. So food has, is his, own out, his, his only outlet. And he uses food to get enjoyment and the director of the movie uses his relation to the food to show something deep about him, that he's not really about that big ideas, big visions, big art. He's not really about that. If he let him go, he's really about that piece of cookie. That's what he's <laughs> really about. But Mozart, on the other hand, for Mozart, the depiction of Mozart, the image of Mozart is the opposite. The big picture of Mozart is about enjoying life, living, and he's really alive. He's really living. Unlike Salieri, who is not sacri sacrificing his life. But Mozart is really living, not, not sacrificing anything. Except maybe his long-term plan or say, taking care of his life. But then, in small details, occasionally we see Mozart, the true character of his Mozart, like the scene he kisses his son when his son is sleeping or the way he's writing his music. He's really immersed. He just goes somewhere else when he's writing music. Mm -hmm. The way he cannot hear the loud knocking on his door. And Mozart is really not ego-driven. When he says, I'm the greatest composer alive, I'm mm -hmm. the greatest of these musicians, so nobody is as good as me, mm -hmm. he's not boasting. For him, it's like an undeniable fact that he's like, why not? Why doesn't everybody else agree with this? Like this is so obvious. <laughs> he's not celebrating. He's not boasting himself. Mm -hmm. He is struck by an, the obviousness of a fact that not is not commonly appreciated. That's what makes him seem like he's pr proud or mm -hmm. arrogant, but he's not. And his relationship with music is also a non-egotistical relationship. He is seeing a world, a musical world, and he forgets himself through that. And that's a real artist. An artist, a good artist, has a world, sees a world, and then in that world, it's such, such a big discovery for him that he forgets himself, and he becomes a 
messenger, a kind of a messenger that shares that, that world for us. And Salieri, his failure was, the sadness of his life was that he never reached that vision of the world big enough to forget himself. He never, until the end, he didn't forget himself. And that was a real tragedy mm. of his life. At the, end, the movie ends by, on a very, a little bit confusing note. The movie says, oh yeah, he was really good. Mozart was really good. And you, we are all mediocre. We are all average. So we can just be comfortable in this life. But, so that seems like the creators of the movie seem to make that to be the center of the tragedy that we are not as good as not everybody's a genius but the, to me the real tragedy was between people who are not forgetting themselves not letting go of like this selfishness and becoming immersed in beauty not being able to do that that's the tragedy not like not being able to be good enough because even if Salieri uh, would just celebrate and help Mozart, he, his tragedy would end. He didn't have to be in this story. Mm -hmm. This story didn't need more than one great composer. <laughs> he could be a supportive, you know, character mm -hmm. in the story. The movie was good, uh, still good after all these years. Still good, the music uh, was good. I, I Every time I watch that, Part I enjoy the analysis of separate voices mm -hmm. in the Requiem, mm -hmm. and then we, they, they put it together and we see the, the whole thing, moments of the whole thing. Uh, and also, I want to mention this: this story nobody knows if it is true or not. Probably not true, but that doesn't matter. What matters is the forms of life that are shown in the movie. There are two multiple forms of life, and they. These kind of relationships with each other, and it ends with the tragic ending of the 